Hello everybody and welcome to the 12th machine learning and pattern recognition for stocks and forex trading. Where we left off we were generating a similar uh, pattern on the chart and now what I would like to do is kind of mesh them all together because if you remember you know if it had maybe five similar patterns we would have to cycle through five uh, charts. So let's go ahead and display it all on the uh, exact same chart. So the first thing I'd like to do is instead of like you know running through all the data, let's just go ahead and make this start at like 37,000. And so that should give us a good amount of data to start with. The next thing that we want to do is let's come up here and let's change this to 70 instead of uh, 40. We'll still append that pattern. And now what we want to say is let's see so if it was greater than 70 it would do something right but instead let's let's just if it's over uh, 70 instead of actually doing something this time what we're, we're gonna do is like true or false if a pattern was found so let's just say pattern found equals one as in like true the next thing we should do is let's go ahead and I guess we could get let's take this and let's just comment this stuff out for now because we don't really need to print that out and we certainly don't need to print either of these things out either. Now the next thing that we probably should do is up here at pattern recognition uh, let's put down some space here and we'll just uh, by let's say pat found equals zero so by default there is no pattern found right and then also let's have a plot pat array and this will be like the pattern of um, plots basically because like right down here right we were actually just plotting it every time instead let's just append this to a you know a plot pattern array that will plot all at the same time once we have all of them uh, together right so if, uh, if the similarity is greater than 70 what are we going to do well, we'll, you know, we'll get the uh, pattern index, right? And then we'll also say pattern found, in, in a sense, true, right? Now, we still want to do, uh, we can leave the X here. I mean, we could change, we could move that if we wanted, but we'll leave that there. And really, the only other thing we want to do uh, in this if statement every time would be, right, if it did find a pattern, what do we want to do? Well, we want to do plot pat. Uh, array dot append and we want to go ahead and append uh, that pattern now this stuff we don't uh, want to do yet we want to go ahead and run through that entire if uh, statement the next thing we want to do is not under this if statement but still contained in the for loop is now where we or I mean outside of the for loop rather I'm sorry so not under this if statement, not under the for loop. So we want to run through everything in the for loop. And if it matches, then it's going to run through here and append it to this um, array. And then once it's done with that for loop, we'll run uh, this if statement. And, in, in, and just so you understand, the if statement ought to be you know, one indent over, right? It falls under pattern recognition, not the for loop. So you should be able to just go you know, click down here somewhere and just hit tab once. And then what we'll say is if pat found equals one, then we want to do um, some of this stuff. Let's just delete these prints here because we don't need this at all. And then uh, to untab something, you can just hit control and like uh, the left bracket, I guess. And that'll unindent something. I don't know if we've covered that yet, but yeah, that's how you do it. Otherwise, you could do it like one by one, you know. But anyway, uh, so the next thing that we want to do is if pat found equals one we want to identify the figure so that's good and since this will be a little bit bigger of a figure let's go ahead and, and give it a figure size equals and then parentheses do 10 by 6. now now after we've done that what we want to do is we want to call up that uh plot pad array remember so every pattern that's in that plot pad array we now want to plot it right so we'll make a for loop so we'll say for each pat, right? So we're just assigning a variable to each of the patterns in plot 
pat array. We'll say, so for each of the patterns in there, what do we want to do? Well, let's just plot them up, right? So plt.plot, and then xp in reference to xp up here, right? Just a pseudo 1 to 30, basically, uh, to plot. So plt.plot xp, and then each pat. So it plots every pattern that is in that plot array. That way, we're going to get all of this on the same chart. Once we're done with that for loop, what else do we want to do? Well, we want to go ahead and plot the original pattern, right? So pat for recognition. And no longer do we need to plot this, each pattern, right? That is um, not necessary anymore because we're doing that here, right? And we're doing all of the patterns instead of one. Now, what we ought to do is if, say for example, we plot 30 lines, it's going to be really hard <laughs> to know which line was the original line uh, for a couple reasons. One is it, it plots as it goes, right? So so if you, like the first line I think is blue, the second line's green, and then, and then it assigns, you know, colors in, a, in, in whatever order is by default for matplotlib. So if you, you know, plot it first, it will always be a blue line, but other lines will be plotted on top of it, <laughs> right? And if you plot it last, it's going to change color. So the best thing to do is to, you know, choose the color. And for this, we'll use a bright uh, cyan. What did I do? Oh, it's going to be in parentheses. Um, not parentheses, quotes. 5-4 FFF7, this will make a cyan color. And also, let's make it a, a fat line. So we'll say line width equals 3. So not only will this make it a, a, the same color every time, the line, like the thickness of this line, will be a lot thicker than the other lines. So it, you'll, you'll see the line, and you won't be able to miss it. So now, plot grid. Um, we'll make this true, because we want to see the grid. And we'll give it a title, too, while we're uh, doing stuff. We'll say plot title. And we'll call this pattern recognition. Awesome. Save that show. And I believe we are ready um, to see any errors that we've made. <laughs> Usually there's some sort of error. Anyway, run it and wait for it. It'll store the data to the memory. Data link, that looks all good. Wait a few more seconds while it does some stuff. We should probably get it to stop printing out these uh, the whole pattern. I think we'll do that uh, before we are done here. And it plots up. And this time around, unless we did something wrong, there is only one similar pattern. But as you can see, um, we've got you know this this thick blue line as opposed to a thin a thin one. So let me close out of this. Hopefully we'll get another one. Um, the other thing I want to do is let's get rid of that enter to continue thing too next. waiting on this graph to come up. Holy moly. Okay. <laughs> so the next one is uh, quite a bit messier. And we've got a lot of lines here. Um, I wonder if what we ought to do... Um, well, I'll show you guys something really interesting then, since we got so many lines here. Now, as you can see, I mean, they kind of follow the similar, like, you know, almost like a, the bottom of a U, you know, right? They all kind of follow that. There's a few that kind of branch off here. But you can at least see that it's a fair, it's you know, it's close-ish. But now the next question is, what if uh, we close out of this and thank goodness for the enter to continue? If we come up here and we just change this from 70 to 75, right? So if you recall, that was the second pattern in. And so let's close out of this, yes, and let's rerun this. <clears throat> Bring it over here and we'll wait. I'll just pause it while we wait for the data. Okay, the first one we didn't get anything, so that first line, that's no surprise uh, because it was um, just one line met it, so it was fairly likely to not have it. But the second round, we, we ought to get a graph. <laughs> I wouldn't be mad if all of those were uh, somewhere between 70 and 75% the same. Um, there we go. Cool. So you recall the first one. Here's the second one now that we've required not 70 but 75% similarity. So as you can see, we have quite a few less lines than we had before. So just keep that in mind as you just barely wiggle that percentage there. Uh, you have drastic changes in, in uh, similar patterns found, which can really go both ways as far as how much that helps or hurts you, but we'll be talking about that uh, in a little bit. 
So anyways, that's going to conclude uh, video 12 and just displaying all of the similar patterns on the same chart that we're not running through the uh, you know one at a time kind of stuff. And then uh, pretty soon we'll be running this into displaying not only this, but the actual outcomes that truly did happen, and then eventually backtesting everything. So anyway, that's going to conclude uh, part 12 as always. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your support, your subscriptions, and until next time.